Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, I'll be giving you my initial impressions of using this uh, Vivo's new foldable smartphone, which is actually known as the X Fold 3 Pro. And I've been actually using this uh, for the past almost about a week. So it's just not the unboxing and initial imprint, but also what I felt. In fact, uh, I'll also give you some of the things that I noticed because uh, if you know, I have been always been a Samsung Fold user. This is the Fold 5 and this is the new uh, 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 Fold 3 Pro and I have to say in terms of foldables uh, in terms of hardware this has to be one of the most impressive foldable uh, smartphone in terms of hardware that I have noticed in fact if you just look at it this is sort of way thinner uh, but again, I will talk about that later. First, let me actually show you what comes inside the box. And guys, this is a, was a review unit that was sent to me by Vivo. And I think so because of that, one thing was sort of missing. I don't know if that's the same case even with the retail unit, but that was very, very strange. But right, let me show you. Comes in this nice box. Of course, it's unfolded like this, like most foldable. So this comes out. And if you notice this big box, uh, this actually has a good thing is that they bundled a charger in this one. And fortunately, this is again that 120 watt charger that we have seen with a lot of vivo phones so you get that you also get uh, type c cable also the other end is the type c cable but some for some strange reason in this box uh, i did not find uh, much stuff in fact uh, just the sim ejector tool and some card like this but uh, i was checking some international unboxings we also have a back case which was sadly missing in this box though this box was sealed so i don't know some issue with my review unit or something like that that is something that i've noticed so this is what you actually get this is the device itself as you can see for a foldable in fact if you just have a look at this just like this this just looks like a normal smartphone and that's the beauty of this one in fact uh, many of my friends who, uh, uh, came over this weekend and uh, this phone was just like that and just they thought this is a regular smartphone and only once when i opened it up like this they said wow this is so slim and that way i would say in terms of hardware uh, vivo has managed to do something really really different if you look at it it's a lot thinner uh, i believe this is what 11.2 mm and i don't recall the fold 5 but again if you notice the fold 5 is a lot thicker chunkier overall i have to say and even the front screen that is something that i like this is known as the cover screen or whatever they call is considerably wider i would say and this makes a huge difference i would say this smartphone you can use this outer cover screen as a regular smartphone and only when you need to this is something serious or something then you have to open it and it opens up so and this one is also bigger i believe this is about eight inch or something here are all the specs guys for your reference but that's what it is another uh, interesting thing that i noticed and i didn't find this in any other foldable is that most of the foldables if you notice the fingerprint scanner is embedded in the power on off button but here like traditional smartphones we have an in-display fingerprint scanner. And you might uh, ask, what about the inner screen? Here also, we have an in-display fingerprint scanner. And this works really well. This is an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. So that way, I would say, in terms of hardware, what they have done, is they have done a great job. In fact, the phone is also actually actually pretty light to hold in fact i wrote down the weight somewhere over here it's 236 grams and the weight balance has been done very well on this one that's why it simply does not feel that much heavy like most of the other foldables uh, if you have held uh, they generally feel heavy i would say yes the fold 5 improved prior to but again in comparison this the fold 5 looks feels a lot more heavier so that way i would say they have done a great job in terms of the weight balance which is generally an issue with foldable smartphone again as i've told you the screen is also really really good uh, again like you expect on a flagship it's 120 hertz no issues yes it comes with that fun touch ui so yes there is some th stuff that you have to disable otherwise you get that search and all those things uh, the regular stuff but fortunately this one didn't have tons and tons of bloatware preloaded yes there were some extra apps but not a huge bunch of apps that actually annoyed me these were some of the apps again again as it's a vivo phone the, some of the vivo stuff is there but uh, luckily then did not have a tons and tons of bloatware and extra apps for example even the vivo uh, x100 pro their camera centric phone had a lot more bloatware i would say so this is the inner screen in fact i like the inner screen on this one and i uh, have to say the inner screen uh, yes, there is a slight crease if you look at it. 
closely but again the crease i would say is slightly faded compared to what do you say the samsung fold 5 that is something that i'm here it is a lot more visible here it hides only when you move around angle or something like this as you can see you can see it easily so that is something that i have noticed and i like the fact that this is actually bigger when you open it that is what i want on my fold i want to use it like a mini tablet and that works luckily uh, i was worried about the software optimization but i like the fact that for example i'll just open one of the apps uh, we do have this quick toggles over here so that is actually a nice thing so you can toggle between the stuff directly from here so that's still there so that i like and also uh vivo did something unusual for multitasking yes you also have this tray from here you can pull stuff for example uh, multitask and all these things you have that pop-up window and all those things also there on this one let me just uh and you can do like this the, these stuff are also there but again this is one this gesture they have done if you just do like this and go <laughs> you get to the multitasking tray i don't know why they implemented something like this but yeah that is also there for multitasking so that way i would say uh the software implementation is okay but again i would say in terms of the foldable software uh optimization still i would say the samsung one ui uh, software optimization how seamlessly it works between the inner screen and outer screen is done slightly better i would say so there i feel they can improve with the software but again in terms of performance i did not have any issues i have posted to 120 hertz and it worked without any issue another thing that i really liked on this smartphone and i don't know how they pulled it off this one again is having that uh, fastest processor that's the snapdragon 8 gen 3 that's nothing unusual or something like that but this one is having a massive battery for a foldable. Uh, it's having a 5700 milliamp hour battery and then also it's way lighter than the Fold 5. Fold 5 I believe was having 4500 milliamp hour battery. And because of this, the battery life that I'm getting on this smartphone is insane. In fact, the battery life that I'm getting on this smartphone has to be one of the best that I've got on a flagship smartphone that is having the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Yes. In fact, it is exceeding the battery life that I got even with the OnePlus 12. To give you an idea, I actually saved one uh, screenshot. Let me just go, go back. And also, in outdoor uh, situation, the screen goes enough brightness. I don't want to fall in that marketing gimmicks or whatever they say, this number of nets, that number, that's ha ha shit. But yeah, it is actually good. Let me actually show you, I save a screenshot again. Uh, let me just go to the albums, there's a screenshot here. The last day I was uh, just uh, using, uh, yeah, this is the last day's usage. And here it was at 3% battery life. I tried to drain it. But again, notice the standby time. Uh, I It was on the same battery for two days, 15 hours. So that way, the standby drain is also uh, very low. And screen on time, even after that two plus days of usage, I got a screen on time of eight hours. So if you want to just using it, in a single day you can easily get a screen on time of about 10 to 11 hours that makes this one a battery monster and i don't know hats off to the engineering team in vivo uh they have put such a big 5000 milliamp hour battery and then also the handset does not feel heavy so that way i would say in terms of hardware engineering call me impressed uh, stuff like this the in display fingerprint scanner not only in the front screen but even in the inner screen and this actually just works seamlessly also when you open it i feel this goes like actually totally flat but one thing i've noticed is when you open it it just snaps like this on the fold you could adjust it to any degree like this this if i want this angle that is not it just snaps like this on this one so yeah i would say this one I could just adjust it anywhere but this one has some motions over here here you can do but suddenly it just snaps like that so that's what it is uh, coming to the glass protection uh, they call this something armor glass but this is not gorilla glass or something again the front and the back they call that so again you have to take that in face value coming to the camera here again I feel uh, this has to be one of the most powerful foldable smartphones with the camera setup again it has that size of text and the main camera is a 50 megapixel but it's actually really good uh, i'll show you some samples later on and then we have a, a 3x zoom a periscope 64 megapixel again this has OIS and of course 50 megapixel ultra wide uh, and front facing camera is this punch hole and even the 
internal one is a punch hole but i don't mind it samsung is actually using this invisible one but again the quality that you get is slightly better but there is one con i'll talk about it overall i would say in terms of performance uh, uh, the performance was very very good of the smartphone uh, in the last five six days of usage the good thing is that I never encountered any UI lag or anything like that. So that is something that I, I noticed. But again, in India, I think so. it's only coming in one variant. Uh, that's 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. Coming to cellular connectivity, I'm using it with my primary SIM, that is Airtel. And I did not have any problems. The call clarity was very, very clear. No issues. Uh, again, 5G reception out of the box. 5G was working. 5G, uh, that speeds I was getting was good. Wi-Fi speeds were good. Uh, coming to the stereo speaker, here i would say i'm slightly disappointed i made some notes over here so let me just go over it uh here i'm slightly disappointed uh, don't get me wrong the stereo speakers are loud in terms of loudness i don't have a problem but it simply did not have any depth towards it base towards it or in fact this was very very surprising this uh, smartphone though it's one of the most expensive android smartphones out there does not even have that dolby atmos uh, setting over here so that is something that i did not like uh, definitely i would say in terms of stereo speakers the regular fold 5 has a lot more depth and that stereo effect so that is something that i've noticed also in terms of haptic feedback i feel because of this very thin uh, stuff the haptic motor is i would say very very average so if you're expecting super haptics that great haptics the haptics are mediocre to be very very frank this was a, actually a very very good thing i did not experience any heating issues with this smartphone generally some of the uh, smartphones with the snapdragon 8 gen 3 tend to get a little bit warm even with casual usage here no issues like that i did not notice any heating only place where i noticed that the back was getting a little bit warm or sort of hot to touch was when i was continuously using the camera but again guys that's normal with any smartphone out there so that way i would say and that's the reason that you're getting actually very good battery life on this smartphone again i won't uh, spend too much time on the camera interface again it's the standard uh, what do you say uh, vivo camera interface and all those things all the modes are there portrait mode and all those things are there but let me actually show you the samples let's start with outdoor samples first and because of the aperture that is f 1.68 you can get these pictures this natural background blur without much effort without even using the portrait bokeh mode to give you an idea this is the regular picture and this was taken in ultra wide what i like is no color shift between the regular and the ultra wide this is that 3x zoom and here i actually use the 10x uh, zoom to give you one more idea this was taken at 1x just notice the flowers this is that 3x zoom and here finally i am using the 10x zoom and just to give you an idea this was 1x got these very artistic shots by default if you go very close it switches to macro but you can force it uh, out of that and then if you go very close you can get these artistic shots now coming to pictures in artificial lighting here also i feel this smartphone actually does a very good job and if you notice just that one light is there and then also as you can see the picture quality again some samples taken in artificial lighting conditions this was actually at uh, 1x and this gear i zoomed in and then also i got a good shot this was in regular mode and this was actually taken in ultra wide now some of the samples taken with the front facing camera and these were taken in the normal regular mode and here i enabled the portrait mode and i had set the aperture to f 2.8 you have to actually set the aperture that is amount of backlog blur that you want recording this uh, video with the rear facing camera and i have actually kept it to 4k so this is in a sunny area and i'll just uh, move back to that shadowed area to give you an idea how is the exposure and all those things as you can see this, this is that shadowed area and i quickly move to the sunny area so it's able to handle that and let me just walk as you can see the grass is actually very uneven let's see how is the stabilization the audio is also being recorded via its internal microphone um, but for some reason front facing camera video recording is only restricted 1080p which i feel is a big bummer so at least with the rear facing camera i feel at least in the preview the video recording uh, looks to be good and the exposure it's able to handle it but you guys let me know what do you feel about the same now recording this video with the front facing camera and the maximum video recording uh, resolution is uh, up to 1080p only as you can see i'm in a shadowed area 
and here it's able to handle the exposure very well but let's just go here directly in the sun and uh, yes it took a little bit of while to get the skin tones right but uh, it is able to do the exposure right i'm just walking i just walked over some steps and looks like the preview it's good but again if you move from the shadowed area directly to the sunny area yes for a uh, second it is uh, having to adjust the exposure but uh, it's handling it but again i wished uh, they actually really had that 4k video recording because this is supposed to be one of the most expensive and the premium android phone out there and i don't know why the front facing camera video recording is restricted only 1080p so guys this is the vivo x fold 3 pro what do i feel about this certainly as i've told you in terms of the hardware engineering they have done a very very good job with this uh, smartphone i really like what they have done in terms of hardware for foldables i would say as of now this comes at the top yes software i feel they can still improve the software experience a little bit by tweaking and I hopefully they do that with software updates fix some of the bugs and stuff like that. but in terms of raw hardware this is one of the best foldables that i have used in fact the biggest compliment that i can give to the smartphone is that this just feels like a normal phone when you're using it and when you need that big screen you just open it and it's there so that's there but again i do not like some of the short small uh, shortcuts that they have done why no dolby atmos support uh, and that uh, speakers certainly in terms of depth could have been better and i still don't get it why no 4k recording with the front facing camera because the price of the smartphone is very very expensive in fact when you talk about the pricing this is the retail price i don't know guys with the card offers or whatever uh, what will be the pricing but in india this is going to be sold almost close to 1,60,000. that makes it one of the most expensive android out uh, smartphone out uh, there in fact it's even more expensive than the samsung fold 5. so guys this was the vivo x fold 3 pro what do you guys feel about the same do let me know in the comment section below anyways guys that's it for now thanks for watching this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys